session. Uh, when Derek approached me uh, to participate to this panel a few months ago, uh, I kind of I was if I was a bit puzzled. Uh, it's like uh, over all my years of experience at StatScans, uh, really, I've met several data users, I met organization and clients, but it and that have really information needs and but it's, it was all most of the time related to agriculture industry. And uh, value change for me is like, okay, it was, you know, we hear sometime that, you know, they, we, they want us to expand beyond. And actually, at Statistic Canada, we have also the opportunity to we have several divisions. And we have different components of or different divisions looking at different uh, points in the, in the supply chain on the value, uh, at the value chain. So, uh, so I'm basically, I'm stepping a bit uh, out of my comfort zone this morning. But uh, some of my experience, I think, relate to what can, can help as well with, uh, to identify those data needs. So, uh, so again, thank you, Derek. So, so basically, I'm going to, going to take, um, these are the points that I'm going to cover this morning. Uh, even if my experience is just in agriculture, as I said, uh, the industry is much more than, uh, and I think uh, uh, it's much more than just agriculture and food processing, it goes beyond this. And actually those who had a chance to attend our workshop Wednesday, we, you, saw the, you saw also different, uh, the, the presentation that we, from different division, uh, back, all the way up to uh, the food uh, spending by uh, consumers. So it was quite, I think it was quite interesting and all these presentation will be available on the, on the conference website, so, um, so, this, so my first point was just briefly address what uh, we have heard over the last few years about data, some data needs from uh, users. Second point is uh, it's about managing response burden. It's something uh, that uh, uh, we always struggle in the, in the official uh, statistics office because we 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 have use on one side we have user who wants more and more data, and and we have to be innovative to to produce that data, and uh, so that's why I want to spend a bit of time about this. And yesterday, like Jill uh, mentioned in this in her top ten stories, does she include big data? And one of her presenters today maybe will talk a bit about big data. So. Uh, the the env data environment is changing, and it's uh, it's um, it's create also some some opportunity to filling some data gaps. Um, however, before we tap into this these new uh, data alternative data that we we call, there's a, there's quite a f ch some challenge to overcome, and I uh, will present some ideas about possible roles of StatScan, but also not just StatScan, but also other players in the in this, uh, in the business uh, data that s that environment, so for delivering information for the supply chain. So, and brief briefly, I will touch on some possible tools that we have. Among data user uh, need assessment that I complete over my career, the I think the one that was probably the more uh, the more uh, Big, big undertaken was really the content consultation for the last census, the 2016 last census. Uh, that was, it's quite challenging. On one side, we have data users that who are starving for, they want more and more data about different practices, about uh, organic or about any sort of, they want to have detailed information. On the other side, you have the responsibility also to manage a burden that we put on farmers. So without some rules, strict rules, and how to uh, know the, the census of agriculture in itself, like it could become a real nightmare for farmers. Uh, if we were to uh, try to answer all needs with traditional data collection, such as a census or true survey. So in many instances, we had to turn down suggestion, uh, either because it was not in scope, it was not related, strictly relate in the boundary of agriculture in terms of census of agriculture, or it was really too detailed for to, to be present to all the farmers. So uh, here I just present like the, the con there's a, if you search the report on the, um, 
on the Stats Canada website, you, that the report number, you'll, you'll have access to the content uh, report and then it tells you also the methodology we use to, uh, and also it has detail about all the information that we were quite transparent that we were not able to include in the last, in the last census. Um, last April, uh, at, we have an advisory committee on agriculture statistics and uh, from industry and from representative from academics as well. And that's uh, uh, Bren Brenna Grant. I, I, we have to meet today at the conference because uh, I, I didn't meet her yesterday. I know she's around. Okay, yeah, that's what I... And uh, it, she, she made a presentation that was quite uh, an eye-opening for us, like in terms... I was glad because it complements the work that we've done through our users of, stat of primary agriculture data. And um, this, uh, I'm not sure if the report is, is available or will be available on the uh, AFC website, or, but uh, I find that this, it was, I really encourage you to, to read this report. It's very interesting. And it really highlights the current data gaps and uh, who produce data and also who are the producer of data in this whole data systems that we have relate to agriculture and agri-food and even beyond. So the report also is, as, as I said, it's the system itself is not just statistic, official statistic uh, Canada, it has also other suppliers of, of data that are important. And, um, and as you can see, I just in the, this slide, I just highlight some of the, the major uh, data gaps or they, they were identified or team, they were organized by team and some relate to uh, trade data, of course, for, for having agriculture and uh, food processing and all the and industry that are competitive. We need more and to need more about the trade and also the different, have more detail on commodity we export and what we import. Uh, market data was something that was highlighted too, having more transparency on the price on the prices, and supply and disposition. That's something that uh, that was one of the recommendation that we should have actually better or more supply and, and, and disposition for different commodities. Or so there's some gaps that were identified there. Seafood sector, we 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 have an aquaculture survey, but it's it's in an area that I think there's. They have need more information. Organic, I will talk a bit later about that. We have already started some work with them. And interprovincial trade flow. Some about transportation. I think Wednesday you saw that we have some good data about transportation of, uh, uh, of uh, grain. And it's, uh, we had the, the crisis in 2013. And, and, uh, and since then, I think we, we developed some better information. And uh, it's, it's, it's still... Uh, so there's, uh, again, I encourage you to go back to those presentations and see what data is available. And also, you have also needs for sustainable uh, sustainability indicator. And as Jill said yesterday in her top 10 stories, uh, sustainability now is much more than, uh, it's, it's a broader, uh, it cover a much bro broader ground. So uh, also in, uh, the report also identified traceability for us, especially for smaller sector and the emerging is, is some emerging issue and some labor so basically it was quite comprehensive just don't want to spend too much time on it i really encourage you to it's a, i find it's a good report uh, and it it really identify after they di remove double countings and all this it identify many data gaps like 223 data gaps for the value, value chain. And um, uh, not all of these of sure, for sure won't be addressed by statistical office, but it will be addressed also, I think, by industry. Yeah. Uh, these are the codes. I, 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 I like that slide because it, it, it has some nice, uh, nice quote or nice say to say, to think, to say about StatScan and uh, uh, we, we um, prior to the report in the summer 2013, and uh, it was part also of the content determination of 2016 uh, census of agriculture. We, we basically it's an initiative that we have with uh, that was led by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, 
And uh, we consult many organizations, like I think it was something around 37, maybe more at the end. And uh, to really understand the, stake, the stakeholders' data needs, part of the stakeholders, and the existing, if there was alternative data source or admin data that exists out there, basically they gave us the mandate to turn all rocks, make sure there's nothing, uh, nothing left that we have all admin, possible admin data. And also, is really response burden an issue for, uh, for farmers? So uh, the few, few uh, the key findings from that exercise that we did in summer 2013 that uh, StatScan was viewed as an independent, trans transparent broker of information, which is quite, quite reassuring for to, to hear. And we have a clear lack of data on processing and manufacturing. And StatScan produce burden, but it's not, the major, it's not a major issue for industry in general. And at least from the point of view of the organization or, or the farm organization that use the data. Uh, when we talk, we, we receive complaints from farmers, but they're, they're not, I would say they're not um, as significant, as, uh, we don't have as many as, as much as we, uh, we, we may be lead to think. So just quickly, just to, even if we, we're thinking about uh, filling these data gaps, those are kind of a principle that we use for how to manage response burden. And it, it's, um, as I said, there's, there's a traditional way of having more surveys, or, but also there's other way to, to find data. And you have always to keep, we always keep that in mind. And it's when, also when we do some uh, new, new work or new survey with uh, our partners at Agriculture Canada, is we, um, often we go back and forth and we, we really try to, to minimize the burden. So basically one first rule is really to foster good relationship with business respondent. Uh, specifically for large agriculture operation, we do that with having a, uh, having, um, a small team that really take care of, uh, of, of like uh, administrating surveys to them, they, they deal directly, their enterprise are often large and complex. Uh, we try to minimize the number of questionnaires, the number of times we approach, and we try to synchronize the same type of exercise or team exists also for other business in the, uh, the agri-food or value chain. So uh, they're looking at businesses and they try to manage the number of surveys they receive. Uh, the other principle is use administrative data as much as possible, wherever possible. So this is a one guiding or actually a marching order that use admin data before you use, you try to get new survey on. Uh, design user friendly collection that's another one and it's uh, we I won't pretend that we we we, we expert in the, in collection but we're doing some progress and also there's new innovative way to collect data and uh, for example for example the but we're getting there we're getting better for example the census of agriculture was uh, big time this was a big success this year because we use in, internet as a first way to respond instead of a paper questionnaire and it's, uh, we, got, we got a good response rate. Like uh, 2011 we had something like 10% response rate and now it's, uh, it's above 40%, it was above 40% response rate. So big increase this way. Uh, also when we, we, we go collect new, new data, data, we have survey, we're always thinking about make sure that the, the same respondent doesn't receive two serving the same week or two different surveys. So we always coordinate the sample to make sure we don't always tackle or the, the same respondent. It's getting more and more difficult with, uh, with, with uh, especially the large operation because the industry is more and more concentrated. You have larger farms, they're important and we need to have them in the sample. So sometimes we have to do some trade off in terms of, uh, of uh, collection. And also ask the, the, the information only once. That's, that's for example, and, and, uh, one, one example I will use for that is uh, we use a lot of tax data. So instead of, um, of uh, asking, for example, farmers what was their detailed farm expense, we use taxation data instead for 
and we, and we replace that. We're going to use also more and more, for example, crop insurance data. Uh, for sake of time, uh, so basically, uh, also another, when we look at new way of, of uh, for example, remote sensing or satellite data, that, that's a program that's been quite successful. Again, it was done in cooperation with AFC, and uh, we were able to replace a full survey with uh, the September crop survey, uh, with cro and uh, we use a crop yield model to do it that use satellite image and also uh, climate data. And uh, so far the response have been, we've done it for two years and the response have been good for. So basically the question is to, to fill those data gaps, like what else can be done? Like, uh, and we, we heard, basically there's a, we, we call it a new data ecosystem. There's a, there's a lot of technical change out there. There's a, a, a lot of data that's generate and may, maybe my colleague will, uh, other presenter will talk more about big data. Uh, we have little experience with it, but we, we're basically we're following what's happening. And we, we, if there's source of, of uh, potential source of information, we, uh, we're going to, to, to try to get access to it and try to understand and use it. Um, so the alternative data source, it's, uh, it's, we hear a lot about Internet of Things and there's, there's a lot of sensor device and uh, new information that's generated. And it's, um, it, it, uh, for us, it, like also precision agriculture produce a lot of data. So basically we, we want to know, okay, how can we use that data to, and is it possible that data is, could be used to replace uh, some of the statistics we, official statistics that we collect. So, so basically the challenge for us with that possible new data source is really to, it's to learn how to use it and also it's how to structure it and how to mesh it with our current, uh, the, the data we have, the concept, the methods we had, and is it, is it possible to align these things? Accessibility is another thing. So when we the collect the data, sometimes the data is available, but we have some rules to follow, some, some standard to follow for to make sure the data is accessible. So that's sometimes it's collected by a third party provider, but we have to make, once it's, uh, it's a joint effort, we have to make sure it's accessible also for other, uh, use, other users. Acceptability and to participate, uh, that's something that uh, Often when we have new data source, we have from a, a collect by a third party or provider, we have to make sure they're, they're, we have to find some terms of agreement with them to make sure that they like to, sh they, they want to share. Security is a big one too. Uh, the other one that's uh, data quality, especially bias is one that for us is, before we, we start to, to see that uh, those alternative source of data could replace official statistics. We, we have to make sure they're representative and also that they, there's no, uh, what I call, will we call selection bias. Like, they, for example, it's not everybody who has a smartphone or it's not everybody who's doing precision agriculture. So uh, for us, it's uh, basically we cannot just rely on that source of, of new, that new source of information. And uh, just quickly, we, uh, we need also, there's data holders that we, we need to build a case, business case for sharing data with them. Uh, for them, they invest, collect that data. We're, yesterday we are talking about the big six and they're, they're, there's a ton of zillion of data that's generated with precision agriculture, but often when we, we start to approach them and they say, but they don't own the data, it's the farmers who own the data, for example. So we have to go back to them and say, look, uh, can we find some terms before we, we uh, to, to get access and try to understand that data? So another quick way, just, I just have one minute. I don't want to take time from others, but, uh, and that's a point that I think my colleague uh, highlighted in his presentation on supply chain for the, he gave the example of poultry, is we have the, the infrastructure to link and, uh, the different surveys, diff and, and not just from agriculture, but for all the food processing and so on, uh, 
and uh, along the, ch the value chain. And, and this could be quite interesting to, to create data that be useful for analysis, analyst and researcher for, and, uh, and we can find terms to, for you to get access to that type of data to do the, the type of analysis here. So we have an environment, we have the possibility to link these different administrative and service sources basically. And quickly, like a possible contribution also when I'll just, and for example, and just quickly, uh, I'll give you an example of organic. Uh, it was part of the, uh, the, the report and uh, we work with them to define their needs. Their, we define the conceptual net uh, framework of the data they need. Uh, that's not current, that's a data gap. And uh, we basically, we want to know why you're collecting, you need that information and what would be the best way to collect that data and if there's some, and also, when we collect that data, often it give, there's, there's a, reason, a, a reason beyond like a, it's, a, for example, we're going to con contact the, certifi the certification agency and see if they can help us to, to, to get, collect some of that data. So, and uh, uh, I think we have to create this type of partnership where it's a win-win it's a situation where the certification agency, they grow their business, but at the same time, they, they participate also in the data that's need for, for their industry. Um, just quickly, just see we have some tools. And so basically, in conclusion, because we're out of time, we have a significant number of data gaps uh, that were identified in the report. And uh, it's, it's not just the official statistical office to, to address all these data gaps. It's a collective effort. And, uh, but we can for sure help with, uh, we can be, uh, we can complement industry and other government initiative to fill these data gaps. Uh, we can be used as a trust party to certify some of that data or to organize it or better structure it. And uh, we have best practice that we can also promote. So, and, uh, so, basic, that's it.